This week in the Imperial County, One World Beef prepares to open its new facility. Law enforcement agencies participate in community outreach events, and the Imperial Fire continues to burn. I'm Alex Inez. I'm Stella Jimenez, and this is your Desert Review Weekly Webcast. In an exclusive interview with the Desert Review, One World Beef President Eric Brandt gave an update on the soon-to-open beef processing plant. One World Beef is very blessed to have the start of a really good team, and we are hoping for a mid-September startup. The application process has been opened up to identify the key positions we need. Hiring probably won't really start for another month. One World Beef will be a total processing facility, including processing for other labels. The company intends to be a craft producer, similar to a custom winery, with products such as Brandt Beef Jerky. According to Brandt, some of the best beef is here in our local area. Imperial Valley is a special place. We need to market beef correctly. Hopefully, it will be a good thing for the whole community, not just the facility, but also the cattle feeders, the farmers, and all involved. One World Beef wants to be a part of the community. Imperial Valley showed love for their men in blue and their first responders this week. Brownies Cafe in Brawley and the City Chamber hosted an Honor a Hero breakfast Saturday for the Brawley Police and invited the community to show their appreciation for those who put their lives on the line for the citizens of Brawley. On Tuesday night, the El Centro Pal celebrated their sixth annual National Night Out at Carlos Aguilar Park. Ed Preciado, Executive Director for El Centro Pal, hoped the event would foster greater unity. The National Night Out is a national-wide event for communities throughout the U.S. The overall goal is to showcase individual law enforcement and first responders to the community to create closer bonds. The El Centro Fire and Police Departments, U.S. Border Patrol, California Highway Patrol, and Imperial County Sheriffs were all present, actively engaging and speaking with everyone. Law enforcement officers and first responders also handed out free badge stickers and coloring books. The Imperial Fire continues to burn downstream on the California side of the Colorado River as of Wednesday. Helicopter water bucket drops have been successful in decreasing fire intensity, officials said, while fire crews continue to strengthen the fire line. Because of the location, the fire is only accessible by boat. The fire started with a lightning strike and approximately 100 acres have been burnt, with 50% reported as contained. The river remains open, but river users are asked to use extreme caution in the area. Firefighter and public safety continues to be the top priority. A new update for the David vs. Goliath lawsuit, where IID sued the California Independent System Operator, CalISO. Wednesday, a federal judge has ruled the IID's court case alleging monopolistic practices by CalISO can proceed. In his ruling on Monday, United States District Court Judge Anthony Battaglia also stated that the IID's case against CalISO threatens competition for generators of renewable energy located within the IID's service territory. That is, the solar farms and geothermal plants will not be able to export their electricity on IED transmission lines to buyers outside of the county. The court wrote that the reduction in competition for generation potentially raises the cost of renewable energy for those entities and could ultimately affect the rates passed on to the public. Judge Battaglia also let stand the IID claims against CalISO for breach of contract, conversion, unjust enrichment, and restitution. According to IED General Manager Kevin Kelly, IED is pleased to, that the case against CalISO can now move forward. There is no doubt that the district, its renewable energy generators, and ultimately its ratepayers have been harmed by the state's grid operator in denying transmission access to IED's balancing area. Because of the latest incidents involving the recently launched Pokemon Go game, the Calexico Police Department is warning players to stay safe and alert as frenzy over the popular mobile game swells. The game hit Calexico hard last week, said Sergeant Victor Legaspi for the Calexico Police Department. We had an individual who was involved in a hit and run. The individual was riding a bicycle trying to catch a Pokemon and made an abrupt turn and while doing that, a car hit him from behind. Sergeant Legaspi suggests game players take the following precautions. Stay vigilant. Look at your surroundings. Double up. Let someone know where you are. Contact the police department if you see anything suspicious. And avoid playing the game while riding a bicycle and while driving a vehicle. The IDC basketball team is putting on a two-week summer basketball camp 
to teach young players the fundamentals of basketball. Kids ages 6 through 17 showed up eager for their training and to learn new skills. IVC sophomore basketball player and camp coach Luis Vizcaino hoped to provide an effective program. We are here to teach the children the fundamentals of the game. As we add new stations to our camp, we hope the children attending will reach an advanced level of the game. For additional information on these stories and more, check out our free website at thedesertreview.com. Remember to like us on Facebook and pick up our weekly paper at a location near you. I'm Stella Jimenez. I'm Alison Nez, and this is your Desert Review Weekly Webcast.